up here in just a moment. All right, this is part three. Uh, this is 20 minute blocks, unfortunately, but uh, we're going to continue on. I'm talking about uh, childhood friends of John Eddington McGowan at Pickens in the early 40s, and we'll let John pick it up from here. Okay, Andrew was uh, three years younger than me, born in 41, uh, about a year before we went down there from Dumas. <clears throat> but he and I grew up together like brothers, really. We rode horses together, we played, we were inseparable. And very few people know this, but about the same time the store burned, and I'd say it's within a year, 18 months either side, the Pickens, R.A. and uh, Madeline decided to build a new house. They had lived there in the same spot in the old house it was kind of a dark yellow brick. And they decided to build a more southern looking mansion. And during the building of that place, uh, they moved and lived over behind the house that we had initially lived in. Back behind that house, right behind the shop. Okay. As you go down, keep going down that road, there's about three or four little houses on the left. Right. And they lived in the first one, I believe, behind our house, or what was our house then. But we had moved over to the big house by that time. But they, can you imagine R.A. and Madeline and Lynn and Andrew and Jane was born by that time, too, mm -hmm. living in one of those little two or three bedroom places over there on the lake. They did, and um, they were real humble people. They were they were not too good, right, to do that. Uh, lesser people might have moved to Dumas, right, mm -hmm. and just let things go to hell. But not R.A. Not mm -hmm. R.A. don't stay there. He wanted to keep his finger on things. Yeah, that well, was his the, baby, you know. Andrew and I played out there in that big front yard while they were building that house around those big stacks of bricks and cops and robbers, I remember that, and they put a big white fence all the way around the property there, including So the that's when they built the fence, when they was working on that house too. Yeah. That old white fence. And I'll tell you what, it's it's seen better days now. Oh yeah. But when it got finished and the house was white also, it looked like something out of uh, Gone with the Wind. That's what I was fixing to say. They sure did. And of course, they had the big three car garage back in the back, and over it was a apartment in which lived their maid, Johnny. I don't remember Johnny's last name, black woman, but she lived there. Mm -hmm. I think she probably went somewhere else with family on the weekend, but she stayed there all week. And she took care of that house, and then the cook, they had a cook. His name was Lonnie, mm -hmm. and Lonnie lived across the lake. You go down and cross the lake like you're going to the country club. Country club, and okay. turn right, go across the tracks there, and straight ahead, back up to the west or the east, I guess it would be toward the highway. He lived in the last house on the left before he got to the highway, and he would walk down that road and across that bridge into their house every morning, probably five o'clock, stay there all day, cook every bite they ate, and they named that road after him. You go there to the Lonnie Lane. Lane. Lonnie Lane is named after him. Sure is. Uh, wow. Andrew, the other uh, friend I had grew up there with was Weldon Cruz, of course. Right. Jim Cruz, his dad, and Mary Lee. Mary Lee was a postmistress for many years. Yes. Jim was a farm manager. And uh, Weldon was two years younger than me. And Andrew would uh, wait at the bus there, bus stop there, because we all got on the bus there at the depot every morning when school. I rode a bus to school for 12 years. Every day I went to school. No, wow. I'm sorry. It was one day I didn't ride the bus. 
and that was my first day of school. They took me to school and somebody borrowed somebody's station wagon. It was one of those woodies, woodies mm -hmm. that had wood on the side. And uh, I was not a happy camper. It took four men to put me in that woody. <laughs> I spread eagle just to the back door. <coughs> and it took four men to get me in there. Man, you wasn't going. And I, okay, I guess the first day went okay. Cause, so I rode the bus next, after that for 12 solid years. And we always got on there at the depot. And Andrew would, after Weldon and I were already in school, Andrew was lagging behind, still had one more year to go. Andrew would meet us every day there at the bus stop. And I remember one day he said, y'all, read me something. You should know how to read by now, read me yeah. something. So he <laughs> ought to learn something by now. Uh, Stephen Rowland, his dad was a farm manager. Lived back behind us back there was about Cahey, so Travis Cahey. I uh, did a number of things around Pickens. Uh, he ran the gym and uh -huh. heavy equipment and all that. And he had a bunch of boys and kids. Ben and... Uh, ben F. Ken K K he ran the gym, is that right? Well, Travis. Travis K. He's dead. Oh, it's dead. Oh, Travis. Okay. Ben uh, was one of the kids, and he was more like Andrew's age. And uh, Ben ended up being a postal worker and... Um, Fedwell, I believe he's retired now, or Fort Smith, somewhere. I think it's Fort Smith. One of the other boys, George Cahey, I saw him at a recent gathering in Doom in uh, Little Rock. Mm -hmm. Would have never recognized him. But you keep running into these people over the years. Right. I've been hearing from the kids and descendants of them, too. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Travis. I've emailed Travis Jr. I've emailed with him quite a bit. Um, the other kids around there, Ann Grisham lived next door in the big old stucco house. Her dad was Lamar Grisham, was that Lamar right? Lamar Grisham was a bookkeeper, and he left at one point and went to Dermot. And uh, I've reconnected with Ann, went to her husband's funeral down in Hot Springs a few months back. But Ann and I had virtually the same birthday. I was born on the 18th of June. She was born on the 19th. Lived next door to each other, and our mothers had our parties together. And I've uh -huh. got pictures of those birthday parties <clears throat> with Andrew there and Stephen Rowland. Everybody in short pants, about five, six years old, four, four years old. Now, Steve's dad was Doyle Rowland, by the way. Doyle. Doyle right. Rowland. Who ran the lake farm at that time. Well, they kind of moved around. They moved them around, of course, shuffled them around. When I was there, he was a berry place. Oh, okay. One down closer to Winchester. Right. That's where I grew up, by the way. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, there was the uh, Berries. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Berry worked at the shop. That's another story of the shop. Right. And he had some boys, uh, Sydney, close to my age, probably Andrew's age. Sydney and I used to fight a lot uh, at the bus stop, waiting for the bus. Didn't have anything else to do, so we'd fight. Mm -hmm. And he'd usually win. Sydney was a real scrapper. Uh, Sydney worked at Ford Motor Company, I think, in doing so many years, and he passed away here a few years back. His brother James is now the mayor. Of right. The Okay. Sure uh, is, Mayor of Dems. And he had another brother, Spencer. Mm -hmm. Spencer, I understand, has a nice store there, or did have a nice store. And he's preaching at a, a new building there on the highway, too. Yeah. Uh, they lived down there, further down that same road that the Pickens lived temporarily on. Mm -hmm. Kind of between where the Pickens stayed temporarily and where your dad lives now. They lived in the last house on the left of that group of four, five, three or four houses. There. Okay. Okay, the last That's where one. where the Berries lived. And Jim Berry always had a, an old car. He had a Model T he liked to play with. And we'd get in that Model T and 
fired up and get the sparks going and everything. Mm -hmm. But at one point they built the shop and um, you know what year that was brought I in? I don't. I don't remember the year, but also bef about the time it was being built, they, we had a blacksmith shop. Because when we got there in 42, there was not a tractor on the place. Yeah, I was going to get to you about that. It's all mules. And mules. Wagons. And wagons. And plows yes. and for mule pulled. A lot of sharecropper families, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Uh, one day, R.A. turned to Dad and he said, to George, don't, don't order any more harness equipment. We're going mechanized. And my daddy, being the smart and uh, visionary man he was, mm -hmm. thought R.A. was crazy. Mm. He thought R.A. had crossed, it, lost his mind. Dad thought tractors were just flash in the pan. They weren't going to last. <laughs> 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 anyway, within a year... I don't think you can find a mule on a place. I remember several of them. Uh, was it farm all trackers he decided to farm start Farm were the brand of choice when he started. Everything was red. Uh, you wouldn't just wouldn't let a friend drive a green tractor in those days. No. <laughs> uh, and they built a shop to support all this. Right. Well, service them and such. At yeah. the same time, there had been, and there still was, a blacksmith shop. Oh. If you come out of the front door of the shop today and turn right and walk down toward the store, the commissary, the first thing on the right you'd pass would be the old blacksmith shop. And we had a hmm. full-time blacksmith in there with the big fire and the bellows. And, well, I didn't and know that. Making horseshoes and shoeing horses. He was also the, what do you call a horseshoer? There's a name for it. A farrier. Farrier. Mm -hmm. He was also a farrier. And they'd bring the horses and mules or whatever in, the, and he would take care of them. And uh, that was a favorite place for us to play. We'd go around there and play around that, me and Andrew and Willow. And... We would play in the shop too. We played it mostly in the shop while they were building it. Because there was a kind of a lull in the building process there for some reason. And all that was there was the slab. Mm -hmm. Picture a slab, concrete that big. It had the utilities poking up through it every once in a while. But mostly it was just plain concrete. And we skated and we played and busted our knees and busted our oh, chins yeah. and broke our elbows and <laughs> and the other thing we did a lot was uh, ride each of us had a horse now my that, horse's name was White Cloud White Cloud okay Andrew's horse's name was Lightning Bug Lightning Bug and Weldon's horse's name was Black Diamond Black Diamond was Lash LaRue's horse's name oh okay that's where he got that so he borrowed that name from him Andrew's horse, uh, Lightning Bug, had a problem of tourist head mm -hmm. And they had to keep a some kind of strap between his chin strap and his breast down here. I forget. He's got a name, too. Um, and once in a while, I'd forget to put it on him. And I was riding him one day in the pickings yard. And he threw his head back and hit me in the eye. And I thought I would die. I just knew I would die. I knew I'd lose my eyeball. Mm -hmm. I'd already given that up. Mm. But everything turned out okay. But Lightning Bug, he was a Tennessee walker. Pickens has always had Tennessee walkers. Beautiful horses. Mm -hmm. Didn't ride worth a darn. <laughs> now, my little saddle They horse, looked good, but didn't ride. Oh, yeah. Me. My little saddle horse, White Cloud. Whenever we had a cow drive, and we had one once a year, Back in those days, Pickens had about 2,500 head of Paul Herefords. Mm -hmm. And we round oh, them up yeah. once a year and did the vaccinations and the dehorning of the new calves, castration of most of the new bulls or new males. And uh, we had to gather them up from all over the place. So everybody that had a horse participated in that. I got a picture I'm going to give you of me on cow drive. 
I okay. sent it to you on the uh, email. Okay. Uh, and the other guys that participated in the cattle drive, cattle drive always wanted to swap horses with me, with me, hmm. because they knew my horse rode like a Cadillac. Up and down like this, had a really good saddle horse gait, oh. and you could ride that horse all day long. Look through a pair of binoculars while I was in That's how smooth it was. And all these other horses going bam, 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 bam. Just wore them out. And I, I they wanted to tell them, you wish. Yeah. You mm-hmm. wish. I ain't giving it up. It's my horse. Well, um, my horse had a, got pregnant and had a little foal one year while I was at National Guard summer camp. Must have been a summer camp of summer of 55. And Daddy uh, took care of buried it. Uh, the, the colt died. Oh, I see. Right after he was born, it died. Daddy took care of him, buried it, told me when I got back. But uh, I wish that horse had lived. And, um, boy, that yeah. was a fine horse. Well, at least you had a picture, got a picture of it and everything. Remember, you know, remember the yeah. good times you had there. But I always had a... Of course, Andrew and I, all the rest of these people have beautiful saddles. Oh, yeah. Western saddles. Now, that's the old stables behind his house, and yeah. that's where y'all usually saddled up at. Yeah, his horses. His horses. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, I never had a nice Western saddle. I had it, maybe it's one thing that got me to go cavalry in the Army, <laughs> but I had an old McClellan saddle. Now, if you know what a McClellan saddle is, not real familiar it with it. It doesn't have a horn. Oh, really? And it's got a crack down through the middle of it. Ah. To make it easy on a horse's back. It's an old cavalry saddle. It's designed to be comfortable for the horse. For the horse. Not you. Right. I see. And that's the only saddle I ever had. But mm-hmm. Other than steering me toward the cavalry in the Army 20 years, I guess it didn't do me any harm. No, it certainly didn't. Well, let's let's talk about while well, we got on our mind that you, about your dad, George, uh, his contribution in surveying and designing the golf course there. How did that come about? Well, apparently, uh, the powers that be, just like the same ones that uh, urged RA into donating some land for the, uh, or maybe his dad, and donating some land for the cemetery. There was apparently a group in Dumas that wanted to start a country club. And they couldn't decide on where to put it, so R.A. told them he would allow them to put it down there in the crook of the Ball and Lake. So Dad and R.A. went over there, and I think my uncle Hazel's um, husband, Rod, who was an engineer, the three of them went over there and surveyed that out and already turned that property over to him for a nine-hole golf course. Mm-hmm. And it was there for a number of years, and then when I was growing up, they decided to build a swim pool and a bathhouse. And I worked on that. I was still probably 12 or 13 years old, but you could get a job in the, back in those days right? without the Department of Labor breathing down your neck. Right. So I was uh, one of the little laborers in building that the bathhouse, which is still standing today. Right. The original pool was oriented between the bathhouse and the street in that direction. The new one has been turned 90 degrees. So it's not the original pool you see today. Oh, okay. And uh, the old pool was not high tech either. Mm-hmm. You know how today they have these filtration systems? That, oh yeah. Well back in the days when we built that one, and I'm talking about the early 50s, you had to drain that sucker once a week. Really? Drain it. And then refill it up. And well, not refill it up immediately. You got in there with a bucket of I see. and brushes on your hands and knees and brushed the walls and the bottom of that sucker. And got Sounds like you did that a few times. 
got all the algae off the concrete, and then you filled it up. Oh, I see. And cold.